Cat. It's Maximus here. A little bit off subject, but it's still a tool. I guess it's a tethering or, I mean, it's a camping tool. But these can be used for a variety of things besides just tying down the retention str uh, strings for your tent. I thought these might actually be handy for people uh, if you have like a tarp covering up a piece of equipment or a tractor or something. As opposed to you tying to blocks, you could screw these into the ground. They'll hold it pretty tight. The other reason is I was looking at these Coglins. Uh, they call them twist anchors. They're auger type tent anchors. I was in the camping section. I saw pretty much everything was Chinese. And uh, I took a quick peek at these. They were two bucks a piece. And I thought, oh, you know, <laughs> more Chinese. These are actually made in Canada. So I think these are the only camping product that was not made in China. And so that's why I'm doing a little video is trying to do what I can to <laughs> support Canadians. They're <laughs> people too, right? I like the idea of these just because they are augers. If you have soft ground, or you're camping on the beach or something, then you get just a bunch more retention out of these just because they thread into the ground and then transfer the load to a much greater surface area. Obviously, dry, rocky uh, ground, these won't work at all. But if the ground's like, a, and that's why I use a beach as an example, ground that's a little bit softer, these could be absolutely invaluable. I, one criticism is I think they could be a bit stronger due to the nature of them and the fact that you have to thread them in, you may hit rocks, you may hit a section of the ground that is just a bit harder or tougher, you'll end up doing something such as, and I like this the way you can thread them into each other and then use one as a, a lever arm to screw in the other, is that you would end up breaking them. They do advertise these being as acetyl plastic, so acetate, like screwdriver handles, I think they'd be better off for their fiberglass reinforced nylon or even fiberglass reinforced polycarbonate, but they'd probably end up charging three to five bucks a piece. So making them out of acetate is probably the best thing for them to have a good price to performance ratio. They're about 12 inches overall length. You get about 10 inches of actual threaded rod. I think one of the other things that I would, I do appreciate the, how they have it tapered. So it uh, start to the spiral flute. So it does uh, go into the ground pretty easy. They probably should add a taper on the back side Just so it doesn't tear up so much dirt when you're trying to unthread them And I kind of wish they would have had just a, a little bit more of the spiral flutes But I'll go outside and just do a quick little uh, demonstration of these here All right, so these should be <laughs> pretty simple to use This ground is pretty wet too not the softest but definitely not the hardest. You gotta really press in to start the helix to actually grab. And as you can see, it even pulls up the ground once it's several inches in, so you really gotta push this in. You can really feel how it's binding up. Sorry about the shaky camera here. Not an easy way to get a good angle. So you gotta really thread these all the way down. Once you do that, they really are pretty effective. I'll have to admit that there's a lot of force. Just me standing and pulling on this. Oh yeah, that really does hold up pretty well. Pretty easy to deal with. I'm gonna pull it out just a little bit here. Maybe a few inches. <clears throat> wow, it pulled out a pretty big chunk of uh, dirt and mud there, so it does transfer the load. I'm surprised. So as you saw, they're actually not too bad to get into the ground when it's soft. And surprisingly enough, you can see how just having a small helix can actually offset the load to a much bigger area of ground. When I unthreaded that, I had to unthread it to about here to even be able to pull it out. Uh, so the grip, even on that softer, muddier ground, really was strong. It would certainly hold up in a pretty severe windstorm. And one thing I would mention is that you wouldn't want to just put them in a little bit because, um, and if you don't thread them in all the way, you want to make sure that you don't put it in straight and then have the tent stake pulling over. That's when I think they would really break. So put them in at an angle. If you're going to, at the same angle that the strings are going to be pulling on, it would probably be all, a pretty wise choice. 
I do like that they have both a loop and a hook, so it just makes it easy for the to deal with these. They are reasonably lightweight, although I wish they do some kind of other labeling because they're, these stickers just left this horrible stick I'm on them that you got to work to clean off, and uh, it just kind of gums it up. So that's kind of uh, ruins the product just a little bit just to have this terrible gummy area on them. They should just have a tag that's, you know, attached to the loop or something. Other than that, not a lot else to say besides I actually thought these were a great idea. Auger type 10 stakes that just hold real tight. How many people run into issues with 10 stakes that just want to pull up? These are actually 10 stakes that won't pull up. Although I do, and there probably are online like metal versions, aluminum ones, which you may want because there are certainly situations where you have hard ground that's also brittle. Um, we have a hard time driving in normal tent stakes. You can't get them in far enough to have enough friction where one of these would work nice, but a plastic one wouldn't, you know, cut the mustard either. So you'd really need like a heavy duty metal one. Um, but it would be nice to see some, something like that. But if you are doing beach camping or that type of thing, um, and working with slightly softer ground, then I think these things are pretty much unbeatable. I think they are actually a really great idea because they're easy to install because you're not having to deal with hammering them in. You just thread them in and then they're really reliable and secure. Considering that they're two bucks a piece, considering how much they weigh and how much they cost. And so I'm not a big Coglins fan, but, uh, or Coglins fan, but uh, I thought these were pretty neat <laughs> little tent stakes and just felt like sharing them with y'all. Anyway... Really appreciate everybody who's been watching and subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Until next time, Caddis Maximus out.